Well, it could be totally disabled, and um, if you're like a uh, Symantec or something like that, that's how you're going to implement your own replacement firewall and replacement security tools is on top of this secondary layer. Um, so I apologize, I don't have my live demos um, since this is not my computer, but I will uh, just show some quick screenshots. Okay, well that's microscopic, but um, I'll just use that as notes then. So what this is showing is um, the Windows Firewall configuration tool on Windows. And what happened is I ran a socket-based application, like a socket server application, for the first time. And you get this little dialogue that says basically, hey, do you want your application to work correctly or not? And of course everyone says, yes. <laughs> and as a result, you get two default firewall rules um, that aren't very secure. And uh, so this is the warning for you application programmers out there of what the firewall rules that you get by default uh, do is allow any remote address, um, traffic, uh, any traffic UDP or TCP, it will allow that server application to open any port, not just the specific port that it wanted to. So I submit that we can do better than that. And um, so the sample code I wrote um, shows you how to do better than that. And what you end up with is a default, um, sorry, not a default rule, an explicit rule that you would include in like your, your application's install script. And you can bind it then. Um, so this is an allow rule that's bound to uh, the full application path. Uh, a specific remote address, or you can do an address range or whatever, v6 addressing as well. Um, specifically TCP traffic and specifically the single port that that application is allowed to do, to open. And I told you I would link this to the lower level API, which is the filtering platform API. Another sample tool that we included um, basically allows you to dump out the lower level filters that result from those firewall rules. And obviously this is a bunch of Greek here, but anyway, these filters translate into what we just saw in that management UI. Um, you've got the full path name of the, of the server binary, you've got the allowed remote address, you've got the IP protocol, TCP, etc. So again, there's some cool experimentation you can do here. There are a lot of zeros. There are a lot of zeros. It's a uh, Unicode. <laughs> Okay, next demo, hacking IPsec and the Windows uh, Secure Socket extensions. Um, I'm again going to skip the definition here. I'm going to assume that everybody at least has a, a weak understanding of what IPsec is. It's probably at least the level that I do. Um, what's the WinSock Secure Socket extensions? Well, this is basically some extensions to um, the Windows Sockets API um, that now allow at the application la uh, layer, once the once the IPsec negotiation is complete, or not, um, the application can query specific information about the results of that, of that key negotiation. So like the crypto that was negotiated and stuff like that. And so instead of having to make an all or nothing policy decision about whether machine A can negotiate IPsec with machine B, you can now say, okay, we'll let these guys negotiate as, as strong crypto as they possibly can, mutually. And we'll let application A say, okay, well, you can only talk to me if it's really strong crypto, but application B will say, well, okay, I don't care how strong your crypto is, uh, you know, public data or whatever. That was very hard to do before, um, if not impossible, actually. So just to show the tool that we created to that end. Oops, I find myself in the wrong folder. We created an uh, IPsec debugging tool, and we called it IPsec ping. And um, so, for example, to take the, uh, oh yeah, he can't read that at all. Um, anyway, what this does is it says, okay, a attempt to establish um, an IPsec connection between the local computer and uh, a, a target peer. And if that connection is successful, dump out everything you could possibly imagine. You know that I've got the the symmetric algorithm that's negotiated, the hash algorithm, the key agreement protocol, 
um, the authentication protocol, the round trip time, the IPv6 address, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So again, there's tons of information that you can use, whether you want to learn about IPsec, um, whether you want to try to set up IPsec and debug it, um, et cetera. It's a, another fun tool to play with. Okay, finally, hacking crypto. What is CNG? Uh, well, CNG is um, Microsoft's new crypto API, replacing the old legacy crypto API. Um, and it's notable, at least in the context of this demo, in that uh, CNG allows you to do, um, for example, what I'm going to show, um, it allows you to install your own symmetric cipher algorithm with having to write just a minimal amount of code, whereas before that was like a monumental effort, like a year of dev, at least. What's CMS? CMS is the cryptographic messaging syntax standard. I don't have my notes up. Anyway, um, an example of a CMS-enabled application is Outlook. So for example, if you want to plug in um, your own crypto algorithm so you can send encrypted email with it, um, you, you write a little piece of code that does the crypto in the CNG layer, which is the lowest layer. You write a little piece of code that makes the messaging API know what that algorithm is. And I'm going to show you an example of two fish. And then your application, which is CMS aware, Outlook, just works. Um, in summary, everyone here probably knows what two fish is because people keep on saying Bruce Schneier. <laughs> um, anyway, Bruce, uh, two fish is Bruce Schneier's um, entry into the advanced encryption standard. Uh, it didn't win, this was back in 2000, it didn't win. And so it hasn't been as heavily crypt analyzed as a lot of the other crypto algorithms have, uh, but it's still considered very secure. Um, and for the purposes of a demo, it's um, patent free and there's a, a license free reference implementation available for it. So anyway, what I did was um, plug that into Windows. And this is the most boring of all three of the, uh, because I wouldn't have even run this on my laptop. I don't want to plug beta code into Outlook or anything like that. I'm not that brave. Um, so I wrote a test program that um, emulates what Outlook would have done. And basically what the test code does, again, you can run this, using Toofish, um, Alice is sending an email to Bob, let's create Bob's certificate, pretend that we obtained it somehow. Um, we'll create a 256-bit Toofish key, encrypt it, send it to Bob, Bob decrypts the test message and confirms that they match, which of course they do. And that's that. Um, one important note, I didn't mention up front that um, all the samples, all the sample code is actually now available uh, from the various Microsoft MSDN download sites. Um, but I also just, of course, link all of it from my blog. So if, if you're interested in downloading and playing with this stuff, that's uh, the easiest way to find it. Any questions? Okay, thanks guys.